just answering the next question, followed by Ms. Williams and Colonel Glenn. And we'll turn to Carl Paulson for this one. Thank you, Eva. Senator, the federal government is on a spending spree, adding to our national debt at an alarming rate and borrowing trillions of dollars from countries like China and Japan. The U.S. needs to take drastic action to address its deficit spending. What specific steps do you recommend regarding tax policy, tax rates, and reductions in federal spending and programs to address this coming fiscal crisis? Thank you. I think to answer the question, it's important to understand what we're spending the money on. So 17% is domestic discretionary spending. That's transportation. That's the Veterans Department. That's, that's uh, uh, agriculture. 18% is defense, 65%, 65% is Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and interest on the debt, which is now 7% of what we spend at basically a zero interest rate. So we have a big problem. The way Washington is doing it right now is by just putting across the board cuts uh, on the discretionary domestic side and the defense side. I voted against those cuts. I was one of eight people in the Senate to vote against it because it didn't solve our problem, but it was causing us not to invest in our military or the next generation of Americans. We have to fix the problem on the health care side. We've got to reduce costs in Medicare substantially. And, and that's why I've been working with Republicans like Rob Portman, who's a Republican from Ohio, to change the way Medicare works so that we're incentivizing higher quality at a lower cost, focused on the 15% of Medicare beneficiaries that cost most of the Medicare dollars that we spend. It's $300 billion a year. It won't work if we do this in a partisan way. We need people on both sides of the aisle coming together to work on it. It's why I was part of the gang of eight in the Senate, not just on immigration, but on the budget as well. Unfortunately, we were far less successful on the budget side than on the, on the, on the immigration side, mostly because people find it very hard to go home and say, we are going to have to make hard choices. We are. Tom. And I say to my Democratic friends here, there, there is nothing progressive about having $19 trillion. <laughs> Well, if you look at the government spending and government debt from past 100 years, it has been going straight up, straight up. And you tell me today, you have to go to vote for the same two party in Washington, expect them to fix the debt and fix the budget. It doesn't matter which party controls the White House, or the Congress, they are bankrupt our country. They are printing money. And you're going to lose your property values, and you're going to lose your bank account cash values. I would say, Senator Bennett, I would suggest you go back and propose a bill for the Congress and Senate. If you don't balance budget, none of you get paid for cash payers. <laughs> I promise you, I will not vote for more debt increase and enslave our children and our grandchildren. And secondly, I will vote for balanced budget. We need to cut spending. Our government is broke. Our country is broke. But they want to spend more than the one that every new comes in. How do you run your family like that? How do you run your business like that? We go to bankrupt, right? If we cannot. You know, save more instead of spend the more than what we bring in. It's simple math. Do you two parties understand simple math? Republican Democrats in the Washington State. You should have sent some of them home. Time. Yeah. I'm glad we're actually getting the substantive issues here because when you start thinking about $19 trillion in debt, that has doubled under the Obama administration, and one of the main accomplices is sitting right, standing right here. Let's realize that right now, ladies and gentlemen. So when you start talking about that we can't support and defend the military, that's part of the problem. We also live in a great state, Colorado. We have a balanced budget amendment. I have not seen that being offered at the federal level. Why not? I'm certainly willing to do that. I think that's extremely important. You want to show me bipartisan support? Over 70% of the public want a balanced budget amendment. When you start thinking about the Obama, Clinton, Bennett agenda, which is what's going to happen if you allow this to continue, what you're going to see is tax increases. 
But I think we need to go back to history because the first person that supported tax cuts, supply side economics, what they like to call trickle down economics, was JFK. Last time I checked, he was a Democrat. It's amazing what you, when you actually go back and you study history, when you actually reduce tax rates, you're going to grow the economy. Not this 1% or 2% that we've been looking at right now. We want to return more of your money so that you can put it back in the economy. This is what education actually teaches you, ladies and gentlemen. It allows you to actually study history. It studies the fact that there have been examples of both parties being able to work together. Their leading role model, JFK, believed in tax cutting taxes. Our current president and the leading candidate want to increase your taxes. That's wrong. That's not going to grow this economy. Let's let the facts speak for themselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The answer to your question is yes. Neither party understands math. Back there, you're absolutely right. And second, uh, the nominee that you support for president, uh, Daryl Glenn, uh, would more than double the nation's debt because of the tax policies and the spending that he has in his budget. And so it's not the fact.